Canada is not ready to face increasingly dangerous security threats like espionage, cyber attacks, and foreign political interference. That is according to a new assessment of this country's intelligence and security framework. Thomas Junot is a former Department of National Defense analyst and an associate professor at the University of Ottawa. Vincent Rigby served as Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's National Security and Intelligence Advisor between 2020 and 2021. They both contributed uh, greatly to this report and were among the group of people who authored it. Hello to both of you, Professor Juno. Good to see you again, Mr. Rigby. Great to meet you and great to have you on the program. Uh, I'll start with you, Mr. Rigby, because I think what jumped out to uh, myself and the producer working on this segment is certainly the one of the primary thesis, really, the primary thesis put forward that Canada is not ready, and I'll quote it here, to face this new world. What does that mean? Well, it's a world with a dizzying array of security threats, and we've seen a number of trends that have been developing over the last 10, 15, 20 years, and we would suggest that these trends have been gathering steam, if nothing else, over the last five or six years. So whether it's a return to great power rivalry, whether it's a deepening ideological divide in the world between autocracy and democracy, whether it's violent extremism at home, whether it's pandemics, uh, climate change, the rapid spread of technology, which is enabling nefarious acts like cyber warfare, disinformation, et cetera. You add all those up and it's it's quite a scary world. As the Minister of National Defense said, I think last week or the week before, it's a dark world. We'd say it's a very, very dark world. And what we are recommending is that the government needs to pick up its game a little bit to respond to this uh, dizzying array of, of really very serious threats. What is the evidence, uh, Professor Junot, that led you to believe that Canada is not at the point where it can adequately combat the threats that your colleague just laid out. So the, what led us to that is that if you look back perhaps to the last three decades or so, we have been very lucky. We've lived in a, in a very secure environment. We're surrounded by oceans. There's the U.S. to the south. And, and in that environment, we have been uh, sheltered. We've been a very safe country. And that security has led us to be a bit complacent. In a way, that's a good thing because we were complacent because we could afford to be. But our, our assessment is that as the situation deteriorates, as the threats that Vincent identified are intensifying, we need to step up our game. We need to step away from that complacency. Uh, and, and what I want to emphasize uh, to, to back up that assessment is that the report that Vincent and I uh, co-authored with the University of Ottawa, we were supported by a group of 11 mm -hmm. um, uh, advisors, which were all former directors of CSIS, former deputy ministers of national defense and form, foreign affairs, other former national security advisors to the prime minister, ambassadors, and so so on. And it's our collective assessment that Canada uh, facing these dangers needs to take national security more seriously. I actually think it's good that you highlighted that because I want our viewers to know. Uh, you, on our website, we have a link to the to the report. Uh, my colleague Catherine, T Catherine Tunney did some reporting on it as well. It is a list, a who's who of the like, you know, preeminent experts on national security in this country. So it is something, I think, and I, the reason we're doing this segment is because it is something to take seriously. Uh, I want to get into some of the suggestions because it's not just, uh, you know, assessing, a, you know, telling us there's a problem. There, there are some proposed solutions in this as well. But on the subject of, I guess, what's necessary and why it hasn't happened already or why we haven't upped our game already, I have to ask you, Mr. Rigby, you spent time advising the prime minister. Is it your assessment or what is your assessment about the level of political will that exists to up the game? The report's not targeted against any single government. I mean, what we what we actually say is that this has been a trend across a number of governments over a number of years, going back decades, quite frankly. So just to echo what, uh, what, what, what Thomas said, it does take political will. I think one of the problems is that for governments focused on the electoral cycle, this is not something that their constituents are bringing to them. They're not coming to governments, political parties, and saying, we're really, really afraid about the international or the national security environment. But our response to that is that government has an obligation to articulate the threat to Canadians and then to explain how they're going to respond to that threat. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg question. If the government doesn't talk about it, then I think many Canadians will, without even realizing it, bury their, their, their heads in the sand. But I think you've hit the nail on the head. It takes political will. We actually say in the report, you have to look beyond the news cycle or the next electoral period. You have to look out 5, 10, 15 years, make some tough decisions and and get and get moving. Uh, let's not be ad hoc. Let's not be always in response mode. And let's not do things in a piecemeal fashion. Let's have a grand strategy as we move ahead, because other governments have done this, but we haven't. 
If Professor Junot, Canadians aren't knocking on the doors of constituency offices saying, this is what I want you to pay attention to, or they haven't been to this point, do you think, for example, what's happened uh, as far as Russia's invasion of Ukraine might change that a little bit going forward? Just the level of awareness that Canadians seem to have right now about the threat a, a, a country like Russia poses or, or that kind of an issue poses? I think the answer to that is yes. I think that if you if you step back and look at the the evolution of of the national debate on issues of of security, there is more today than there was five years ago. And I, I you know whether it's the war in Ukraine, whether it's the protests that we had here in Ottawa and elsewhere in the country, the growing assertiveness of China, uh, and you know we we've had some discussion in the media of uh, Chinese economic espionage, for example, during the pandemic, uh, the theft of intellectual property uh, in the biopharmaceutical sector, and so on. There is a growing awareness of these issues. But as Vincent said, uh, there is a role for the government to be more proactive uh, at this level. And, and we're strongly encouraging that. We have a full section in the report uh, mm -hmm. that, that really calls on the government to be much more transparent in engaging Canadians and engaging civil society, in engaging parliament, uh, in engaging the private sector to communicate not only on the nature of the threat, but also on things that people can do to help uh, protect themselves, uh, for example, on, on the cyber side. And, and like you've both mentioned, and I did as well, there are some, you know, distinct suggestions here about things that, that can be done. I'm wondering, Mr. Rigby, if you can highlight for our audience, uh, especially when you, the report talks about strengthening tools or adding tools or rejigging tools that, that are available, like in layman's terms, what is a tool that this country needs or the federal government needs to exercise or, or bring into force that would better help it combat the threats that you see present right now? Well, we've got four broad categories of recommendations in the report. Um, so we have uh, tools, we have transparency, as Thomas mentioned. We also have a, a section on, on governance. So before I talk briefly about, about tools, uh, we, we actually believe that it has to start with strategy. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems we have in Canada is we've not had a national security policy since 2004. So if you, if you do the math, that's, that's 18 years. We've not had a foreign policy statement since 2005. Uh, so that's that's 17 years. So it uh, it is time in our view. These re these reviews are not easy to do. They require some public consultation. I think that would be an important component. But these are interconnected threats, and they they really require an interconnected response, a, a holistic strategy that involves not just the government of Canada, but all of Canada, uh, other levels of government, the private sector, research institutions, universities. So I think that's one of our biggest recommendations: develop that strategy. The tools are what you need to actually implement the strategy. So do we have the right legislation in place? Uh, there's been a lot of talk recently about the CSIS Act, the, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service Act, and whether it is fit for purpose. Uh, I would argue that it's woefully out of date and we need to update it. Huge technolog technological developments have happened in the last 20, 30 years that CSIS cannot, cannot, keep, up, cannot keep up with. Um, we also have to look at, the, at, a, at, a, at a number of other pieces of legislation, potentially. How we share information on the intelligence side, I think, is very important. We, we would argue strongly that we have to share intelligence better uh, within government, but also, again, with those actors I just talked about outside of, 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 of government. Um, so those are just a, some, some, some very quick, quick ideas and, and you know, develop sharper tools to develop with some of these specific threats. So hostile activities of state actors, all the kinds of things that we've been hearing about over the last uh, number of years in terms of, as you said, you know, espionage, cyber attacks, um, disinformation, misinformation, foreign interference. Let's, let's develop those tools to respond to them and also to domestic violent extremism. Do we need a strategy? The, the U.S. has a strategy to deal with domestic violent extremism. We don't. You've heard the director of CSIS talk a lot about this phenomenon for yeah. a while. So I think yeah, we need to look at that. Okay, uh, a subject that definitely deserves a lot more discussion, but unfortunately I'm out of time, so I have to leave it there. I do appreciate both of you making time for our conversation tonight. Thanks very much to Vincent Rigby and Thomas Junot. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.